Hi guys, welcome back. In this next section, we're going to be looking at mechanisms. But in fact, there's so much to look at that this is going to be a two part video series. So in today's part, we're going to look at mechanisms in everyday life because they're used all the time. They're super helpful. We're going to learn the four types of motion, consider mechanisms as systems and learn and apply the rules for first, second and third order levers. So let's take a look at mechanisms in everyday life. Well, what are mechanisms? The point of a mechanism is to make a job easier to do. We find them everywhere, like your car, sewing machines, can openers, even rotary trimmers at school instead of having to use a craft knife. So can open here is obviously so incredibly helpful. Mechanisms going on inside, uh, the use of wheels, a car jack, and this is the side of a sewing machine. They are used to change the speed, direction or force required to do something and may change one motion into another. So we have this very clever dog here. He's managing to turn the pedals on this bike, which is causing the wheels to turn. And this man here, he's not incredibly strong. He just happens to be utilising a pulley to lift this very heavy weight. So whether you created a simple mechanical toy when you were a bit younger, or you're looking at a really complex mechanical toy, like this incredible bat design that someone's made out of Lego. You can see the gears there and there'll be some kind of motor in the base. Or if you're thinking about everyday items, like this incredibly complex watch and all the components inside, incredibly tiny and fine. Or if you're thinking about the uh, functional inside of just something simple like a pillar drill, not many students see the inside of a pillar drill, but this is what it looks like. We have a system of pulleys that uh, come from the motor, and that's what causes the drill bit to turn. Now let's get to the four types of motion. So here are our diagrams. So the first is linear. The second is reciprocating. The third is rotary. And the fourth is oscillating. Now hopefully you can have a guess at the motions from the diagrams, but let's go through. So linear is motion in a straight line, in theory indefinitely, whereas reciprocating is a back and forth motion. Now a lot of students get these confused, but linear, if something's going in one direction, it could stop and turn around and come back in another linear direction, but it's not going to go back and forth and back and forth. Rotary is motion in a circle often around a central pivot point, like a doorknob, for instance. Oscillating is motion in an arc. So I have for us some examples and we'll go through together. Have a little think, but let's go through. So the number one is going to be, it's going to go around and around. Well, it's going to be rotary. Number two is probably the trickiest of the lot. But we have the arrows there to indicate what's happening with that roller chain. And it's only going in one direction. So it's linear. Number three, our, the, our fan is moving in an arc. So it's oscillating. And number four, the little follower for our cam toy here is going up and down and up and down in a reciprocating motion. So now it's your turn. I'd like you to pause the video for as long as you need and I'd like you to work out what motion is happening in each. Now I can just give you a little bit of insight. There's a might be a couple of different types of motion for maybe a couple of these different gifts. So pause the video and I'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, welcome back. I hope you did some good thinking. Let's go through. So number one here for our metronome, that keeps time in music in case you weren't very familiar. That is moving in an arc, which is oscillating. Whereas number two, our little piston heads here, which are going up and down. This is the inside of an engine. You can see the fuel coming in, exploding, going out again. So our piston heads are moving up and down in a reciprocating motion. Number three, although the GIF is called obviously throwing our train backwards, of course, trains just move in one direction until they stop and turn around, so they are linear. But you could have also maybe included 
that the wheels are going around. So that would be rotary. Number four, our uh, jet plane engine. You can see the blades whirling around a central pivot point here, so it's rotary. And then number five, our door is moving uh, from the hinges in an oscillating motion. But you could have also said perhaps that it was linear because it's moving in one direction and then you'd stop and then you'd move it again to close it. Good job, everyone. Well done. OK, let's have a look at mechanisms as systems. So mechanical systems can be quite complicated, but if we break it down into three simple blocks, we're going to make it really easy on ourselves. Those are input, process and output, just like this. And if we put them in a block diagram, we're going to make it even easier. So here we have a young lady riding a bike. Let's have a think about what this would look like as a block systems diagram. Well, for our input, she's applying force to the pedals. And the process is going to be that that energy is being converted by the chain and gear system to the rear wheel, which is going to propel her forward. Now it's time for you to have a go. So I'd like you to write me a block diagram, input, process and output, for reeling in a fish. It's not supposed to be complicated. Don't overthink it. I'll see you in a minute. OK, welcome back. Let's go through. So hopefully you can see Steve furiously trying to turn the handle of his reel here. And then what's happening? Well, that is causing the reel to rotate as well, which is drawing back that fishing line. And then the output is hopefully pulling the fish from the water. Well done. Now let's take a look at orders of levers. So we've all been on a seesaw before. And hopefully you might know the middle, uh, the name for the middle part. It's called a pivot. And famously, Archimedes said, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. I like that, big thoughts. But he is absolutely right. And let's have a look at levers and how this might apply. So levers lift a load by rotating around a pivot point using effort. Now I've included the alternate words here, fulcrum and effort, because you may see them in textbooks or online um, as also alternate words, um, often tend to be more American as well, but just to be aware. But we use the, the terms load, pivot and effort. So there are three orders of levers to learn about. They're also called classes, so just be aware of that as well. It can look really confusing, but stick with me and I promise it'll all be fine. So I want you to always come back to the following little silly poem. One, two, three, P-L-E. One, two, three, P-L-E. So a first order lever has P at its heart. A second order lever has L at its heart. And a third order lever has E at its heart. So as, as long as you can remember one, two, three, P, L, E, and write them like this, you will never get stuck. And I promise you, I get confused and I just write this out and I always come back to it and it always works. So we're going to look at the order diagrams as well. And they look a bit like this, but we're going to go through them now. So this is a first order lever. And of course, we just learned that a first order lever has P at its heart. So by that, I mean that the pivot point is at the center. Now, I don't say so use the word center because I don't want you to think it's always necessarily right in the middle. It could be slightly to the left. It could be slightly to the right. But that's why I like to say has P at its heart. And you can see here that we have the effort on one side and the load on the other. So it's kind of like a seesaw. So the closer the load is to the pivot, the less effort is needed. This is starting to sound very familiar, and it's a lot like Archimedes trying to move the world with his pivot, with his fulcrum point. And this is what the uh, little diagram looks like down here. So we have the pivot down the centre, we have the effort on one side and the load on the other. Just be aware that they can swap places. It doesn't always have to be 
effort on the left, load on the right. It can be the other way around, but as long as the pivot is at the, at the heart, you'll know that you're in the right place. So here we have a little triangle to represent the pivot point, the effort on the left and the load on the right. Now a second order lever is going to look a lot like the first, but this time the load is at its heart. So we can see here. So the closer together the pivot and the load, the le less effort is needed. And actually we can visualise that one really, can't we? So for instance, a can crusher can be quite a nice example. Let's have a look at the little diagram. So let's start off by putting the load in the middle. Then in this case, the pivot is on the left and the effort is on the right. So load and in the middle, pivot on the left with our little triangle and the effort on the right. And the last but not least, we have our third order lever. So as you can see here, we have the effort at its heart, the efforts in the middle there. So the further apart the effort and the pivot are, the less effort is needed. So a fishing rod is a nice example of a third order lever. And let's look at the diagram. Well, let's put the effort in the middle again. The pivot is on the left in this case. The load is on the right in this case. So we put the pivot on the left, the effort in the middle and the load on the right. Let's have a go at working some out together. Now, when we get back to class, I'll have plenty for you, don't worry, but let's start off by doing some together. So here I have three diagrams. Now they're not in order. I'd like uh, us to work out which is first order, which is second order, and which is third order. Well, the way that I like to look at it is I will always look for the pivot point, first of all, because I always think that's kind of the easiest bit to look for. So in this case, for the juicer, the pivot is obvious over here on the left. In the middle, for this person trying to fork up some soil, it's going to be right over here at the end. And then for our can, it's going to be in the middle. If that doesn't already clue you in as to which is which, then the next thing to do is to have a look at the load. So that's the, the weight, what you're trying to move. Well, for our juicer, of course, it's going to be right down here in the middle. For trying to move some soil, that heavy soil, it's going to be right over here on the left hand side. And then to lift this paint can, all the, the load is going to be over here on the left. And then the last thing to do is to work out where the effort is. So here for our juicer, it's going to be on the right hand side by the handles. For lifting the soil, it's going to be here in the middle. And for our screwdriver, we're going to be pulling it downwards to pull up that load on the right. Now we have a really good idea. Let's try and draw ourselves a lever diagram. We'll start off with our simple lines, just like this. Now let's put them in one at a time. So let's start with our pivot points. Let's draw our little triangles just for fun. So in this case, we know that the P goes on the left, this one on the right, and this one in the middle. Let's do our loads. There you go, I'm just lining them up, one beneath the other. And then our effort goes just there. So now we can work out which is which. So which one has P at its centre? Well, it's the one over here. This is our first order lever. Which one is our second with L in the middle? Well, it's going to be this one over here. It's not quite in the centre, it's on the left. This is our second order. And then over here, we have our third order lever because we can see that the effort is in the middle. There we go, first, second and third order levers. It's really not that complicated once you get the hang of it. So what have we learned today? Well, mechanisms are found everywhere. They change speed, direction, force and motion to make jobs easier to do. The four types of motion are linear, reciprocating, oscillating and rotary. Many mechanisms utilise more than one. Mechanical systems can be complicated, but we can break them down to input, process and output. Levers lift a load by rotating around a pivot using effort. And we think about the three orders of levers, the first, second and third, by using one, two, three, P, L, E. Good job. Well done, everyone. Bye.